Welcome back to Without Shortcuts. Today we are making pasta. Everybody knows pasta can be pretty fickle, so you want to make sure that you get down there, hit that like button, maybe give the channel a quick subscription. Those are going to ensure that your pasta comes out just right. Yeah, real nice. Now we had originally filmed this video as the entree for our date night series. We made a pasta and a sauce. That video ended up being about 45 minutes long. It was so boring. I think both of us ended up falling asleep at some point in the middle of it. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> so we took a page out of Hollywood's book, came back and did some reshoots. So if things look a little bit off here and there, you see maybe a weird transition or two, that's what's going on. That being said, this is a simple, easy recipe. Great product comes out of it. And it's going to absolutely elevate that date night meal to something really special for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and just get into it. Now we all know that you can go to the store, pick up a box of dried pasta, throw it in some boiling water and boom, you've got it done. But we're gonna show you how easy it is to just throw together fresh pasta and you'll be amazed at how much better the quality is. It is absolutely worth the time. So that being said, there's a thousand different ways you can make pasta. But just to make sure that everybody can do this and that you can see exactly what our method is, we're gonna do it the old fashioned way, right here on the counter, uh, and just make the whole thing by hand. Now when you're making your own pasta, you can use all purpose flour, you can use whole wheat, you can use semolina, some kind of a combination. You can also use whole eggs or egg yolks. For our pasta today, we're gonna to use equal parts of all purpose flour and semolina. We'll go ahead and use three whole eggs and then just a little bit of salt and some olive oil. So we're gonna get started on this. Just so you know, I mean, the semolina, it's just another type of flour. It is available in any of your major grocery stores and you can find it just in that same aisle with the flour. That being said, we're gonna take, we're just gonna pour our cup of all-purpose flour right onto the counter, our cup of semolina flour right on top of that. We're gonna put just a dash of salt right on the top of that. All right. Then we're going to take and we're just going to make a well right in the middle. All right, so once you've got that nice well right in the middle of your semolina and your flour, you're just going to put your three eggs right into the middle. Whoop, spilling out a little bit. Nothing hurt by that. Once I've got those in the middle, I'm just going to kind of start beating those together. And as I'm beating those, I'm going to bring in just a little bit of flour from the rim. Once I get that going a little bit, I'm going to take and add probably just like a teaspoon of olive oil. A little bit of controversy on whether or not you should really add oil to your pasta. But I think adding just that little bit kind of smooths it out, makes it a little bit more forgiving. So then we're just going to keep mixing this, keep pulling in some flour from the outside edges of it. All right, once that starts coming into shape and kind of holds together, then you're gonna to switch to just doing this by hand. Now, keep in mind our counter surface was clean when we started this, you wanna make sure that's done. My hands are perfectly clean. You wanna make sure that's done because if you're doing date night, you certainly don't want anyone having any dirty hands in their food. So, clean your fork off and get some more flour. Just start mixing that in. Just make sure everything is incorporated. Keep finding more flour, incorporating it into your dough. Okay, when it stops kind of sticking to things, and it starts coming in and drying out, then you switch from mixing the flour into it to really just kneading it until it smooths out. Now this part does take a little bit of time, maybe 10 minutes or so. Eventually. You wanna make sure that you get that gluten built up and you get that nice texture, but again, absolutely worth it just take the time do it right and as it starts coming together you'll be able to feel less and less of the graininess from the semolina if you're using just flour it'll start drying out it's less sticky starts to become smooth pliable it's a little more stretchy less crumbly as you stretch it out on your kneading 
All right, so this is just about finished up. I've been kneading this for probably a total of, you know, <clears throat> maybe five minutes tops. But it's getting nice and smooth. I've kind of incorporated flour when I need to. You can see it's pliable. It's not sticky, but it's not falling apart. It's not cracking. And as you let this rest, it will just smooth out and hydrate itself, and it'll just turn into this nice, perfect pasta dough exactly how you want it. So shape it into a ball, kind of pull a seam together at the bottom, and voila, there you go. There's your homemade pasta. We're gonna go ahead and take our pasta dough and wrap it up in some plastic wrap. Go ahead and make sure it's nice and tight, and then you wanna go ahead and give it a couple of twists just to kind of help get some of the air out of it. Now you want to let this rest for at least 30 minutes at room temperature. You can let it rest for a couple of hours if you want to go ahead and make it ahead of time. If you let it rest for longer than 30 minutes, stick it in the fridge. Just make sure that you take it out of the fridge about 30 minutes before you want to use it so that the dough is pliable again. So our pasta is rested for a couple of hours while we got some sauce ready and a few other things done. Uh, but we're ready to take it apart and start making this a meal. All right, so we're going to unwrap our pasta. Now we've got a pretty good sized chunk of pasta dough here. We don't need the whole thing for what we're making. So we're going to go ahead and just divide this in half. And then we'll rewrap this one and we will save that for another time. All right, so the one we've got left, I'm going to divide that in half again. The piece that we're not using is going to stay underneath a damp towel just so that that doesn't get dried out. So we're going to flour the counter just a little bit here. And then I'm going to flatten this out into roughly like a rectangular shape. Now as he's getting that going, we're going to get ready to pass that through the pasta machine. Now, I know we said there's not going to be a lot of special equipment, but in this case, pasta machines are a dime a dozen. But you could do this with a sharp knife, rolling pin, you could totally make this happen. But for now, we're going to start with our pasta machine. We're going to be on the widest setting. We're just going to take this and start running it through. Now on the widest setting, first time through, if you see some cracks on the edges, especially the first time, that's completely normal. Uh, but you're going to take it, you're just going to do kind of a rollover book fold on it, and then just run it through again. And if you're too dry, you'll see some cracks. Just do this a few times until you don't see those cracks and everything comes out nice and even. So we're just going to do this one more time. Fold it together, kind of pat it down, and back through the roller. So like I said, this is just on our widest setting. And once we get it where there's nice even edges and it's fairly consistent, then I'm going to drop down from the 1 to the 2. may vary depending on what machine you're using. Run that through on the 2 setting. I'll put just a little bit of flour on there. Okay, drop that down to 3. Okay, from 3 on my machine I can drop it to a 5. I can start skipping one in between there just to save on time. If at any point you get too little flour on the outside it'll start sticking together so make sure you keep you know a good little dusting of flour on both sides as you're doing this okay go down to a seven all right so there we have one nice little piece of pasta at this point you could go in a couple of different directions you could make this into lasagna fettuccine ravioli in this case, we're going with spaghetti. Now I'm going to set up my attachment for my pasta machine. For this one in particular, it just slides on right into place. I'm going to roll that through the spaghetti side, but I don't want my noodles to be quite that long. So I'm going to just cut them. It doesn't take a lot of pressure, so I don't mind just doing it on the counter. Get two even pieces, and then each of those just gets fed through our attachment. Voila, nice, thin, light, fresh cooked spaghetti. Now after it comes out, you're gonna take a little bit of your flour, 
make sure you get that in there and mix it up. This will prevent it as it's sitting before you cook it from all sticking together into one just big clump and then you're going to take it and just put it into your moist towel and let that sit while you get the other ones run through the machine. So you can see we've got a nice big bunch of perfectly formed fresh spaghetti noodles here. They're ready to go into our pot of boiling water. Right, now we've got a pot of boiling water on the stove. It's at a full rolling boil and we've also salted the water. You want to salt it to what you would imagine the ocean tastes like. So let's get our pasta in the water. Now when we put this in here, it's only going to take 30 seconds to a minute to cook. It's super thin and fresh pasta cooks really fast. Alright, so our pasta looks about done. We'll go ahead and shut the heat off. It's nice and puffed up. Everything's floated up to the surface of the water. So we'll just grab some with our tongs here. And we'll put it right into our bowl. Normally this is the part of the video where we would show you the end result so you can see what this pasta looks like what it's supposed to taste like, but you know what, in this case, it just comes out a lot better when you serve it with that meat sauce that we're gonna show you in the next video. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see the culmination of this process when everything comes together, the pasta, the meat sauce, one nice bowl, it's absolutely worth the time. That's right. So until then, follow us on Instagram, hit us up on Twitter, show us your successes, ask us any questions that you have, and until next time, Skip the shortcuts. Thanks, guys.